I have a new video for you guys about Zoe 101. Dan Schneider created this show back in 2004 and it was a huge hit. I'm sure having one of the biggest pop stars, Little Sisters, definitely helped. But today we're going to talk about some of the most uncomfortable and inappropriate moments in this show. Jamie Lynn and her castmates had to do some weird things on camera and we're going to break them down. So let's get into it. As you guys know, we've been talking about Dan Schneider on my channel because he created some of your favorite childhood shows, including Drake and Josh, Victorious, iCarly, and today we're talking about Zoe 101, a true classic. This came out back in 2004. It was filmed at a legit school in Malibu, had Jamie Lynn Spears, whose bigger sister at the time in 2004 was like the number one pop star. So a ton of people loved this show, including myself. But as as we've grown up, we've started to see some of the gross and sick moments that these creepy producers included in the show, and it's time to call them out. So that's what we're going to do today in this video. I have made a part one of disturbing moments from Zoe 101. Definitely go check that out. I do have something to say about that video, but I'm going to save it towards the end of this one. But definitely go watch it because it has some moments that are very sick, and we're not going to address them today because this is part two. So in the first episode of this series, Series, there's already an innuendo. And if you guys don't know what an innuendo is, it's pretty much a suggestion, an inappropriate one. Usually those jokes that you missed as a child that are made for adults that probably should have never been included in the kids show because no adults were really watching it at the time. I mean, of course adults were watching it, but it was made for kids. So why include them? And in this episode, Zoe gets to meet her roommate, Nicole, and they decide to cut up Nicole's shirt to make it a little more cute or revealing or whatever. And honestly, that's not the weird part. The weird part is when Nicole is thanking Zoe and she calls her by a name that is obviously inappropriate or trying to suggest something inappropriate. I'll let you guys listen for yourselves. Take off the shirt. <laughs> How'd you do this? You're like a wizard with scissors. I'm gonna call you the scissor wizard. <laughs> no, you're not. Okay. The scissor wizard. Like, mm, okay, hold up. So obviously Jamie Lynn knew what that meant because she was like, uh, no, you're not gonna call me that. And that reminds me of so many other words that Dan has created for other shows, kind of like iCarly and Hobschnocker, which is an inappropriate reference. It's so inappropriate that the UK actually edited out that lingo from the iCarly episode. And I believe the scissor wizard is the same type of innuendo referring to something inappropriate involving children. Children. I know you guys are probably waiting for me to address the whole Logan and Matt situation, which I will at the end of my video, like I said, but I want to include this photo because he is wearing a shirt that says, I spent one night in Paris, which if you're reading this and you don't really understand context, it probably won't mean anything to you. Okay, so he went to Paris or France or whatever, but around this time, Paris Hilton actually had a tape, a very inappropriate adult tape that was leaked to the public that she did not want to be out there. And it was titled the same thing as what's on his shirt. I spent one night in Paris, as in in Paris Hilton. So if any adult was watching this back in the day, they would fully understand what his shirt was referring to. And I don't understand why they go the extra step to create this when it's not even part of the storyline. So in part one, we talked about this dance that was happening in Zoe 101, and it was all about feet. And you guys know Dan Schneider loves his feet. And here's a little reminder of that scene. He won first place in the Fresno Foot Fest. Winning two footy awards is a big deal. Tonight at six. I'll bring my feet. Well, actually, that guy in that scene, who is supposed to be Zoe's partner, ends up getting injured, which means she can't go to this feet-oriented dance. But what's weird about his injury is that he hurt a part of his body, which is inappropriate, and again, another way to make an innuendo for the adults who are watching. Well, he's still gonna be able to dance by next Saturday, right? Dance. That boy will be lucky if he can pee by next Saturday. That boy will be lucky if he can pee by next Saturday, which again, I don't know if she's trying to insinuate that he broke his, you know what, but it's a weird reference and something you guys asked me to include in this video. So there you go. As I've mentioned, Dan Schneider loves his feet and you guys are going to see feet throughout Zoe 101, less feet than maybe I Carly, but there are still a ton of references. So there's this awkward scene between Chase and Lola and pretty much 
which they're kind of flirting and they end up playing Would You Rather? And one of the questions is very odd. I'll go ahead and just play it for you guys. Hey, do you want to play Would You Rather? I don't know. How do you play? Well, I give you two insane choices and you have to pick which one you'd rather do. Would you rather be locked in a cage with a wild tiger or lick peanut butter off a hobo's foot? What? Which would you rather do? Well, Lola is not about it, rightfully so. And they talk a little bit more about their relationship in general because she's kind of just taken back by it all. But towards the end of their conversation, she comes around and she refers to this question that he just asked her. And you guys need to hear what she says because I'm like, why are they asking about this hobo foot and peanut butter? So which would you rather do? Huh? Be locked in a cage with a wild tiger or lick peanut butter off a hobo's foot? Oh, easy. Peanut butter off a hobo's foot. Why? I'm scared of tigers and I love peanut butter. <gasps> Why are they trying to make this like a romantic scene? Like, a, hey, before I leave, like, so what would you rather do? And he's like, mm, a hobo with some peanut butter on its foot. Like what is going on here? It's such an inappropriate, weird joke that I feel like why, the feat is just unnecessary. And once you take a look at the director and the producer and everything, it starts making sense. Before we talk a little bit more about Dustin, Zoe's little brother in this show, I have to remind you guys of a scene we talked about in my first video where he is literally locked to some contraption thing and he is tickled by some laser beam by Quinn. And it's a very awkward situation. Extremely hard to watch, but you guys know who wrote and created this moment. Huh? <laughs> I mean, if that is not Dan's fantasies playing out on screen, then I don't know what is. Oh my gosh. I feel so bad for Dustin, and honestly in several ways, because he was the youngest cast member on this show. He started when he was just 10 years old just turned 10, he was nine, he in, the, in the single digits before he started this show. And some of the things that he did and how his character was written, I feel like would leave him with some trauma. Both in iCarly and Zoe 101 and Drake and Josh, there are a lot of references to uh, women's upper body. Honestly, I don't know what I can say on YouTube because I can't say the B-O-O-B-S word. Um, so pretty much the upper chest area. And there is a scene, there are multiple scenes in Zoe 101 where they are referring to women's body parts. And it's kind of odd. Again, just thinking that this is a kid's show, it doesn't quite make sense to me. Like in one scene, there is a moment where Lola and Dustin are having a moment. And pretty much he is looking at her chest, as you guys can see in the notes of the script, they literally say, Dustin starts staring at Lola, who is wearing a bikini. Lola says, quit looking at my swimsuit. And then Dustin tells her, hey, no, you actually have a bug on your stomach, that's why. Again, trying to make the little kid stare at the girl's like upper chest for whatever reason, they probably think it's funny, which is obviously not the worst thing in the world, but it's still a kid's show. Quit looking at my swimsuit. I'm not. You have a bug on your stomach. What? There's another scene in the show, actually the last episode of the entire series, when Dustin is paired with Quinn for their prom date. And as she gets ready for the prom, she has a conversation with Lola where they talk about how her dress is probably a little bit too revealing for her date, who is just a little kid. Quinn says, do you think I'm prom ready? Lola says, yeah, but don't you think that dress is a little too uh hot for your date, Dustin? Quinn says, Dustin's very mature for his age. Why is this giving me Zoe Laverne vibes? If you guys don't know who she is, she is a TikToker who was called out last year for having a full bone relationship with a 14 year old when she was 18. And she was like, oh, he's very mature for his age. Like that is just reminding me of that. But here is that moment played out on camera. Am I prom ready? Yeah, but don't you think that dress is a little too sexy for your date? Dustin? Dustin's very mature for his age. Yeah, I hear his bedtime got moved up to 8.15. Ew, why is this reminding me of so many gross moments? Like, it makes me think about the eight-year-old we talked about on my channel, how she has a full-blown relationship with a 15-year-old. They're in, like, the Ukraine or something. But someone commented on one of my videos and was like, oh, she doesn't look eight. Just because she doesn't look eight doesn't change that she is eight. And honestly, in this situation, just because Dustin is mature doesn't mean he is mature. Obviously, it's a made-up show, but that's just where my mind is going. Speaking of Dustin, here is another scene with him and his sister where he asks her where kids come from. And it's just awkward. And let me tell you, it's not fun helping your little brother with geometry. <sighs> now tell me how you calculate the area of a trapezoid. Will you tell me where babies come from? Actually, 
Absolutely not. I'm not even trying to hate here, but the acting is so bad. Like, I understand they're kids and I'm not trying to be a hater. Like, I watched this as a young lad and I enjoyed it. So again, not the worst thing in the world, but this is the youngest castmate. And that gave the producers and the directors the opportunity for innuendos with an even younger child than what they're already working with. So while we're on the topic of Dustin, keep in mind that he was 10 years old on the show and he was still playing a young kid. Well, in one of these episodes, he actually became really scared from a scary movie he was watching and this led to him wanting to stay in Zoe's room with her and her roommates. Well there was a weird moment between Lola and Zoe where pretty much Lola was asking her how long is Dustin going to stay here? Zoe said until he's not scared anymore. Lola said what if that takes weeks? I can't handle that Zoe. I need to be able to throw my undergarment on the floor without worrying if your little brother is going to find it, take a digital picture of it and show it to his friends. Towards the end of the episode, they all get along again, but Lola brings up this digital picture situation, and it just seems so weird. Let's go ahead and play it. Sorry, you can stay here. You can move in with us. You can even take a digital picture of my bra. Why even write that in? Like, why does he need to take a digital picture of your bra? Worst thing in the world? No. But weird? Yes. It's like this show cannot get away from talking about women's body parts. In my first video about Zoe 101, we talked about a scene where Zoe was showing the girls these designs of these outfits for them to wear. And obviously the pictures of the women are like far mature, very developed, and it's just not kid friendly at all. Actually, Nicole, who's played by Alexa Nicholas, asks Zoe, how are we going to get our upper chest to look like that? And that was one of the jokes from that scene. And there's another clip where Chase is actually talking about the food at the cafeteria. He brings up a chicken breast. And of course, <sighs> Dan had to write something in about that. The PCA lunch ladies would learn to make a better chicken breast. Why are you giggling? Because Chase said breast. Breast. <laughs> Oh my god, Tori rolling her eyes like that? Ugh, I would be too. Logan's character is quite annoying. And I'm not trying to be a hater, but that's just my opinion. But Erin Sanders, who played Quinn, also had her moments as well. We brought her up in my last video because there are a lot of weird pictures of her and Dan. And actually, Dan wrote Quinn's part after meeting Erin. So there wasn't going to be a Quinn until he met Erin and he just liked her so much that he had to include her on the show. I got a lot of emails asking me, like, what happened to Aaron? Like, did, did her and Dan have a whole thing? And I cannot find anything about that. But Aaron is on Instagram. She's been posting. She's very active on social media. It looks like she's also been working these past few years. Not a ton. She's mostly well known for her Nickelodeon roles, but she's still out here. And she was involved in some of these uncomfortable scenes we're watching today. Like this one, for instance, she's talking to Chase and she brings up the fact that she has a sixth toe. Something that I feel like Dan included for a reason because there's so many references to feet. Huh? When? What? Spiders aren't insects, they're arachnids. Can I go? No. Did you know that elephant urine smells like licorice? Oh my god. <gasps> No. Oh my gosh, hold up. We need to pause because the copyright system you already know, but she is about to throw up her foot onto this table and talk about her extra part, which no shame if you have an extra toe. I'm not trying to shame anyone for that. I'm sure she doesn't have one, but did Dan like that? Like, did he, did he, like, the more the merrier? Like, if you have more than five toes on your foot, the more the merrier. I don't really know how foot, like, you know, fantasies go. I obviously am not in that realm, but that's a good question, actually. Like, the more the merrier, do they enjoy that better? I'm not too sure. I have an extra toe. Want to see? Make it stop. <gasps> Don't you guys want to see my extra toe? No! It's kind of weird how all three girls grabbed onto her foot. I didn't even realize that. They all put their foot on her shoe. Like, we do not need three people to stop her from taking off her shoe. There's more that's wrong with this show than just these feet references and these little clips because I've gotten tons of emails from you guys that just this show in general was either blocked in your household or your parents wouldn't let you watch it because there are certain things they refer to in the show that kind of like ruin your innocence. As I'm watching these clips, I'm so shocked that this is actually made for children because back then I wasn't talking about hooking up with people or doing physical things. And that seems to be a common theme in this show. These are just two random characters, but watch how Quinn is creeping on their conversation. So, you wanna hook up this weekend? Maybe see a movie or something? You know I have a social studies report due on Monday. Hey, I'm social. Study me. 
excuse me, could you guys talk a little louder, please? I'm trying. So, hey, okay, nothing wrong with Quinn here. The joke, oh, why don't you social study me? Like, excuse me, sir, what if she wants to wait till marriage? No shame if she doesn't, but what if she does? I don't even know why I just said that. But towards the end of this clip, there's another moment where they are actually kissing and Quinn's over here turning around, taking pictures of them. Oh, Quinn! Like, how odd. This next scene involves another innuendo moment, and it has Chase, Logan, and Zoe. And pretty much Chase is listening to the couple talk while he's in a bush. And the way that Dan Schneider wrote this script is to make it seem like Zoe and Logan are talking about inappropriate things or doing inappropriate things. And the way that Chase is perceiving it, he's really grossed out by it all. So I don't really know why they would create this moment, insinuating that Zoe and Logan were like physically doing something. Hearing everything. Look, I wanted to tell you, but I was embarrassed. You should be embarrassed. Oh, gosh. Already, it, I'm so taken back. It's like the aggressiveness of it all. I'm like, hold up, Chase. Chill out. I mean, Logan? I know, but he's taught me so much. Oh, God. It's true. I mean, he really knows his stuff. Huh. So obviously Dan and the producers instructed him to behave in this type of way, like react to it as if they're talking about doing you know what. And he did, it really seems like that way. Oh! Oh! Oh, God. Wow, he's really upset you're tutoring me. Yeah. Okay, so we need to talk about Matt Underwood. He plays Logan and he was just featured in that last clip. Because my last video, I talked a little bit about Matt. I have to um, apologize to you guys, not him, because I went a little bit hard on him. And the reason why is because I've actually had an interaction with him before because he has talked crap about me and my channel and Dan Schneider and claiming that all of this is just fake and made up stuff. When in fact, I have actually talked to direct people who have interacted with this man and things have gone down. But Logan just sees me as a drama gossiping YouTuber, even though he hasn't watched any of my videos, he already knows that everything about Dan is fake and lies. He actually claims that there were social services on set and there were people there to take care of the children and that there's no way that anyone was ever harmed by Dan Schneider because Matt Underwood knows it all. Keep in mind guys, we talked about Matt in my last video because he was charged with doing things with minors, literally criminally charged. And once he was on probation, he broke probation in so many different ways that he got in even more trouble. I mean, the probation system is screwed up. I'm not gonna act like it's not. But what I think is even more screwed up is that he was caught with a minor and the minor was on substances. So he can call me a gossipy drama YouTuber all he wants. He can claim that the Dan Schneider stuff is made up. Obviously here we're talking about a television show. So we're not talking about real allegations like we have in previous videos. But that's why I kind of went at Matt and I said in my video that he was a side character. I did watch the show when I was younger. I know that Logan wasn't a side character. And so many people were like, oh, tell me that you haven't watched Zoe 101 without having to tell me. And I'm, I'm not trying to act like I'm a Zoe 101 expert. I haven't watched it in years and years. Today I watched a couple of episodes because I was making this video, but I just don't like this guy personally because of what I've heard him say about me. And it was so unkind that I wasn't even seeing parts of it for my own mental health and well-being. So I'm not trying to act like I don't know who Matt Underwood is or who Logan was or that he wasn't a big character because he was throughout this video. But he himself is also a criminal and I'm not going to act shy when it comes down to it. I do not have any criminal charges, let alone with a minor. So if we're going to go over here and talk about how Dan and I was doing things with minors, I probably wouldn't listen to the guy defending him when he has criminal charges with minors. You guys kind of understand where I'm coming from because there are people who have come out here and said, oh, like, you know, Dan Schneider is actually innocent and there's someone from Zoe 101 who is speaking up about it. Well, it's this guy, this guy who has criminal charges involving minors. So in my opinion, when it comes to hearing, oh, you know, things about Dan Schneider from people who were around him, I'm probably not going to trust the guy who has already been criminally charged with doing things with minors. I feel like I'm repeating myself over and over again, but I just want to make it very clear that that's why I personally do not like him. And it's fine. I'll, I don't, we don't have beef or anything. It's just that he went on and wrote a whole book about how awful I am without even really watching my content. And I don't need to go and trash his character. That's not about me. I'm about receipts. And all I have to do is go look at your criminal background. And I know enough. So I wanted to address that because I have gotten some backlash on that video 
before that one line where I said that he's a side character. I, I understand he's not a side character, but don't act like he's the main one either, okay? He's definitely like the, the fifth in line or something, okay? <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I actually had a few other things I wanted to talk about, like Jamie Lynn and her daughter. They had an incident that went down a few years ago that I was completely unaware of, and I don't know how to bring it up in a video. So if you want a separate video talking about how Jimmy Lynn is just so extremely reckless, then let me know in the comments below. But at the end of my videos, I usually open a peel box item and I've got one right here from Kristen. So let's go ahead and open it. Luckily, I don't need my little opener today because I don't know where it is. It keeps disappearing on me, but this one seems pretty easy to open. It says do not bend because fragile. So let's go ahead and see. And she's actually from the East Coast of the United States. So let's see what is in here. Thank you so much, Kristen, for sending me something. I really appreciate that. Hi Sloan, I wanted to take the time and thank you for all the time, effort, and love you put into your channel and the topics you cover. I'm sure it isn't easy having to read and talk about such upsetting topics, but it's important and necessary work and we all thank you for being the one to do it. Make sure you're getting some rest too. I included some products that I make for you to enjoy. A 20 sheet handmade notepad on for the receipts. I love that. Again, we all thank you for everything in your research that you put out here into the world. It's not easy talking about big money, but we must come together and protect each other. I agree. It's really the industry versus us. And I'm scared for myself sometimes. Um, keep up the incredible work. And it looks like she actually sells her notepads and bookmarks and stickers and everything else on her website. So I will link those all below. Thank you so much, Kristen. So let's go ahead and see what she sent me. So here is the notepad that she put together. And I'm so excited to see it. <gasps> Whoa, hold up. Stickers are flying. Here are those stickers that just flew out there. They're so pretty. They're like eyes. One is a reflective like moon and one is a star. So I love that. Here is the notepad, which is so cute. Thank you so much. I'll have it right here on my desk with me, ready to write down all the receipts. And then it looks like she included, I'm thinking this is a bookmark, but let's go ahead and see what's actually inside. I actually really love the paper. It kind of feels like it's wax paper in a way. I'm not too sure if that's the way to describe it, but oh, this is so cute. Wow. Kind of goes with it. Thank you. I really love this, Kristen. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in a new video soon. Bye friends.